I've created a number of videos like this in the past to keep you up to date with Samsung smart things and this has meant that I've tackled topics like local home automation, new applications and even the end of the groovy platform that so much of smart things is based on. SmartThings Edge actually signifies the end of the Groovy platform and so when I say to you that this will improve your experience with SmartThings including giving you access to things like local control plus making your smart home easier to manage I know I've got to prove that so I went out I tried SmartThings Edge and now I'm ready to share. Although the press release for SmartThings Edge had a lot of information in it, I thought it was best to reach out to the folks at SmartThings, get a bit of an inside scoop into what all of this meant. Of course, they didn't disappoint as I got into a virtual room with a number of smart folks. They confirmed a few things right off the bat. Yes, Groovy will end, but no, that will not mean the end of the cloud integrations you're using today that you know and love. Yes, the point is local control, but no, you will not lose all of these custom features that you have in your devices. All that at about five minutes into a chat with them, and through that, they also got me started using SmartThings Edge on my hub immediately. It's a beta program and I'm going to show you how I got signed up and using this. There's a link below for you to go and enroll your hub and it doesn't appear to be region restricted which is great news for all of us around the world. However, it doesn't seem like your SmartThings Wi-Fi is going to work with this, at least not now. I clicked the link, I logged in with my credentials, and then I hit a couple of buttons and started to install some of what are called Edge Drivers. Edge Drivers are the new name for custom device handlers, and you just saw the entire installation process for one of these. There's no more copy and paste of code into a groovy panel, and there's no more back and forth between a PC or a Mac and the application. That was it. Then I went into my hub in the SmartThings application and top right when I clicked on the dots I had a new driver section and when I went in there it showed me that I was already enrolled in these new Edge drivers on my hub. And that's a big deal because it was actually on my hub and this is one of the big gaps in the Groovy platform. Those custom device handlers are executing in the cloud, not on your device. And so when you do this, when you install these drivers, they are installing directly onto your SmartThings hub. That's great and all, but none of my devices were using these new edge drivers and so I went and did a little bit more reading and I found out that you have to actually reinstall a directly connected device entirely in order to have it use the new driver. One thing that I want to make clear is this is not how you will experience SmartThings Edge. This is just how it's going in the beta right now. You have to do this reinstallation process. So I removed a bunch of devices that I thought might work and then I re-added them back in. I tried an Akara motion sensor because I knew number one you guys would be super excited and number two it fit the description of one of the Edge drivers. But what I found out about this during the beta at least is that my existing groovy custom device handler actually took over when I reinstalled that one and just was reused. So that's one aspect of the beta right now. I also had a couple of smart plugs and those fit the power monitoring uh, driver that I had but unfortunately those were already local so I wasn't going to gain much anyways and they didn't pick up and use that new edge driver either. So I was basically at my limit because I read the V2 and V3 smart things devices themselves they are already local that's not going to get included in this early beta the point is to get cloud devices converted over to local devices. So I turned to the community over at the SmartThings boards and there's a number of developers that frequent those boards and one of them I have been using many many custom device handlers for a number of years and I actually share those custom device handlers with you. Now his name is Kevin and clearly he likes French strawberries given his tag on the forums but he created a number of the zoos 
uh, custom device handlers that I shared with you in our last video about motion sensors. Well, he had already gone and created a number of edge drivers for some of Zeus's devices. So he's continuing down this path. He's installed the new developer tools that Samsung has put out with this and he's already creating these drivers in the Lua language. That Lua language is actually from the 1990s, I found out. So it's not some new language that everyone's got to use or learn. It's been there a while and it's not that hard to use because he's already converted a couple of those products. So in order to gain access to his Edge drivers, he sent me a link to what's called a channel. I clicked that link and then I was able to install those Edge drivers onto my hub. Now unfortunately, I didn't have either of the ones that he had initially created, but he's still creating these other ones and I know soon I'm going to end up with some new drivers from him that I can install on my hub. So I was feeling a bit like I wasn't going to be able to do anything with this and maybe this video wasn't going to work out quite right. But I've been following that octopus guy on Twitter and he actually tweeted out that Samsung had updated one of their edge drivers to include a couple of very important Zigbee motion sensors that I know you guys are going to love. What happened was Samsung had updated the Edge driver and any developer that you have signed up for their Edge drivers can update and then within about 12 hours, they're gonna be pushed out to your hub. Now that could be a double-edged sword where this could cause a problem for certain devices, but you're gonna be able to choose other Edge drivers to apply to those devices at that point. So after 12 hours of waiting, I had this downloaded onto my hub and I was able to repair my IKEA Zigbee motion sensor for all of $10 and my Sonoff Zigbee motion sensor for another $8. The IKEA motion sensor right away showed that it was using the new Edge driver. And actually, if I had a couple of Zigbee motion sensor drivers, I could pick between them, but I just had the one right now and that meant that I could go and try out automations and see if they were gonna be local. Well, as soon as I created uh, automation here, it was instantly done with this little icon next to it, which yes, means it's a local edge automation. So what I had in this new edge automation was an IKEA smart bulb for all of $9 and an IKEA motion sensor for about that $10 all of this happening under $20 using my SmartThings hub. And I just want to explain what this does to the specification sheet because it doesn't solve everything for your existing sensors. A bad sensor is still a bad sensor. They keep the specifications that they had before. The difference comes when you look at the bottom left of this page, which says cloud and the custom device handler. That now just changes to local and there'll be a recommendation for an edge driver that you can use and you'll just have to click that link and hit install. It was the same thing for the Sonoff and then I went back to that Akara and I tried that one again but Akara's done some things with their devices there that just mean they don't pair right here and they aren't going to use that edge driver at least not yet. So I started to do some testing with automations to see now how far we could go and then I got a little help from my friends at SmartThings and we put together these lists. So here's what I found. The basics of on and off or toggles and even dimmer control works locally. However, as soon as you start timers on anything, it's not working. So auto turn off or delays go remote or cloud-based for the moment. The dimmer or percent scales in the application could also be compared. And while today I couldn't use the greater or equal to and less or equal to functions locally, I've been told that that is coming and that we will see those turn to local conditions that you'll be able to use. These are the other local conditions you'll be able to use as well. And when we flip over to time, we can talk about any time, a period of time, sunset, sunrise with offsets, and all of those still execute locally. I was also able to check what location mode I was in locally, but security modes, the weather, and of course, member locations were all done on the cloud. 
Samsung also gave me a number of other things for local execution, and some of these things don't even exist yet, so that's pretty exciting. Anything I did with scenes, even with completely local devices, unfortunately did not execute locally or did not show that they were executing locally, so that one's still yet to come. Something else that I noticed that would just happen automatically is I would jump into the application and suddenly my devices would be downloading a new driver. It would take a few seconds, not a long time, and then it would update and the device would be ready to go again. Now that I have this, I can already see how I'm going to feel the loss of the smart things, sensors, and devices that Samsung was making directly. I'm gonna feel that loss a lot less because now I've just been opened up or my world has been opened up to many more devices and I even feel like I can use a lot of those IKEA devices now that I have an edge driver that works with my motion sensor and I know the other ones will come. Either way, this is big and it signifies more than that. You see, there was so much concern about the loss of the Groovy platform, but the SmartThings team was listening. As we lose the Groovy platform, it will be replaced by something that developers can still use to create custom device handlers just called edge drivers. And many of us are going to get local execution, which we have been asking for forever and puts it in line with both Hubitat and Home Assistant in terms of local execution options. They aren't dropping those custom features you have on devices that came from those custom device handlers. They're giving them to you locally. This is not only impressive, but it's the way this platform needed to go. There are no changes to the rules API and we're just getting new features there. All the cloud integrations, all of that is still remaining. It's just getting better. This is literally the front edge of automation for many of you now, and it's very exciting. You can check out the beta by clicking the links down below. But I think the thing that most of you are going to want to do today is to get more out of your SmartThings system, and that's why I've been sharing all of my hidden tips and tricks in the playlist that's up on screen. You can go pick one of those videos that will get more out of a specific part of your SmartThings setup. So go check that out. Otherwise, thanks for watching today, and of course, don't hate, automate.